Hello, today we're going to be going over to Nobo to coach with you. We're going to be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. Uh, this guy up here is going to be for a little light switch, so if you had to hook up at night and uh, get away in an emergency. And then you got your up, pretty much the raise and lower the tongue jack. This is how we get on and off the tow vehicle, but this is also how we level the camper from front to back. I do like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle to figure out your side to side to make sure you're level there first. You may have to put blocks down and level one side or the other. Uh, let the tow vehicle help you do that. Once you've done that, then you level front to back with these guys. Then you will lower your stabilizer jacks. They're located on each corner of the camper. It is a three quarter socket. I tell you that to put it on a drill. They do provide the manual crank for you inside the coach. But as you see, this guy does sit rather tall naturally. So I would recommend the drill. Uh, as you see, your leg is also extended pretty far. Nice thing is, is that your foot actually does have uh, adjustments on it as well. So you can adjust it up to, I believe it, an additional four inches to kind of try to help out with that. All right, next, we're gonna have our propane tanks located right underneath here. They are two 20 pound tanks. This guy here is our regulator. This, this guy here will tell us what tank we're using. It's got this little notch here to tell us. And as you see, it reads red right now, so when it has no propane flow. You turn this guy on, as you see, it just went to green. That shows that there is a propane flow. So once the tank is empty, this would turn red. This system is designed to where you can have both tanks on. Once this tank would be empty, it would start drawing from the other tank. But you're not going to know that unless you come out here and look at your regulator to see that it's reading red. We usually like to recommend having one tank on at a time so you know when one of them is empty. Well, I got this off. It's a little easier to show you. Pretty much the battery is located right behind here. Just a 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. This guy right here is going to be our battery disconnect. So when you are storing a camper, you just turn this to the off position. And basically it shuts the camper down so that nothing would potentially drain the battery. I didn't know if you caught this when I was showing you this, but this guy here was just flashing. Uh, basically, it's showing that it isn't connecting right now. This guy is all tied in with the system as well. And that's part of your tire monitoring system. All right, as we come around the side here, we're going to have our manual cranks for our tongue jack. And for the stabilizers. Like I said, as you see, there's quite a bit of clearance. Drill makes it a lot easier. This guy here is going to be your cap for the fresh water drain that's located down below, right there. To fill that fresh water, it's going to be located right here. And it's just gravity fed, so you just stick the hose in and let it fill. I do recommend that you read the monitor panel inside so you know when it's filled to shut it off. You don't want to wait for water to start coming back out of here because over time it can cause damage to both the outside and the inside where it's connected. Down below that is going to be where the city water connection is. With this, it is recommended that you have a pressure regulator on the water spigot first. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then a blue or white water drinking hose. From there, you'll plug, hook up to here, turn it on. You'll be ready to use the cold water side. You have to wait for the water heater to fill before you're able to use the hot side. And of course, you got to let it warm up. So with our slide room here, this is what they consider to be a Schwinn textile slide. One important thing to note with these guys is to they are to never be lubricated. The reason why is because these guys work on two independent motors that talk to each other through a control panel. Uh, when you lubricate them, they start getting gummed up over time, and then the motors don't properly work, and then damage can occur. The simple fix for these when they start looking dirty or dingy is just soap and water. We'll talk about our tires once we get to the other side. This guy here is going to be your black tank flush. Basically, it's a sprayer inside black tank sprays around to get the nastiness out. <clears throat> I always like to recommend go to Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, wherever you can go, and go get yourself a black hose. Black tank, black hose keeps it simple. You got your blue or white for water drinking, or you got your black for the waste. You ain't ever got to worry about uh, wastewater ever touching the hose. That is one thing you don't ever have to worry about. Uh, I do like to recommend you use a regulator on this as well because there is a check valve on the back side of this that can get damaged if too strong a water pressure because it is plastic. 
your sewer dump is going to be located down below here basically you got your black handle for the black tank this valve is always going to be open when you go to do the flush right now it is open that's going to be closed and then you got your gray well we're also down here we got our low point drains for the water lines you got red and white red is hot white is cold uh, basically these are the lowest points to the water lines uh, so a lot of times these get used when you go to uh, winterize your coach i also like to recommend when you're done camping if you open up these water lines and open up a faucet in the coach as you drive home that water will the air is going to blow through there and push any excess water out so you don't have any stagnant uh, water that could potentially occur where it comes bad, starts smelling like rotten eggs, things along that nature. You got your cable and satellite hook up here. Here's going to be your 30 amp power cord that does come with the coach. You can store your sewer hose in the bumper uh, that is not provided uh, with, with that. We do have our spare tire here. And then we got our little uh, access back door here. We got the ladder for the uh, upper bunk. Uh, our box for our TV. Uh, this guy here will also fold down for the bottom bunk and it just rests on these guys here. This guy does have its own set of purple keys. It's going to be this one here, which I will uh, get labeled for you guys. I'll pretty much color this in with one of my uh, colored uh, Sharpies and uh, write an R on it for the uh, rear door to make it a little simpler for you guys. We do have the ladder to the roof. Uh, I would recommend still getting a step stool or at least a six foot ladder to help you climb up here. Uh, it is quite a gap distance between the bumper and to that first ledge. Uh, you definitely get a workout trying to do that. Uh, it is also pre-wired for a uh, observational backup camera. Uh, basically with your ladder, there is a weight limit on there for 250, uh, but you're just going up there to inspect the roof, no parties. You're checking the uh, lap ceiling on it is basically what you're doing. You've already got uh, solar on the roof. Uh, they do provide another access point where it's a simple plug and play and basically it just sits out here on the ground for an additional solar option. Inside our compartment here, we're gonna have a couple of items. One's gonna be our uh, outside sprayer hose. It's gonna connect right over here to that. I'll show you guys that in just a second. We got our gas line that we hook, hooks up to our LP quick connect down below. This guy is in the off position now when you want to get your uh, line hooked up to it. You turn that knob right there so it'll allow the propane to come through. Inside the box is our griddle here. And then on here is going to be the mount that we're mount onto this rack. And then it has arms that come out that will secure into these little guys right here. And they do have R keys so you can lock it into place so it, would so it wouldn't potentially slide off. This key, uh, basically this lock here is gonna be your silver key here, the Bauer key, that's gonna be for your compartment door locks. Just like so. Okay, so there are tires here. Uh, you always do wanna make sure that the lug nuts get torqued at 50, 100, and 200 miles. And our sticker here tells us that we are torquing those to 100 foot-pounds. And it's recommended that you always do do that. Uh, I always like to say, a lot of times when you leave the campground, you're making quite a few turns. First place where you're stopping usually is the gas station to refuel. Well, while you're refueling, you can check the lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. Also, you do want to try to keep the tires topped off to their max PSI level. Uh, you got the nice Goodyear Wranglers. These are actually good size, good tires. Uh, I believe these guys were, I believe these guys were 60 PSI. Oh, my correction, 50 PSI. As you see here, you got these caps here. Uh, these caps are telling us that they got the tire monitoring system in there. Uh, basically, it's just a sensor that's inside the tire. So if you ever do get the tires replaced, you do have to let them know that there are sensors in there so they don't potentially get damaged. This here is going to be that spray port I was telling you about for the outside sprayer. Pretty much it just twists and locks in. Then we got our port for the furnace. Uh, it's recommended you don't try to hang anything here. As you see, there's a caution for the hot exhaust. Uh, but we do like to say get mud dauber screens to cover these. Keep the mud daubers and wasp out of there. 
We do have an outside 110 outlet. This guy here is the considered the uh, front of the water heater. Basically, you got this guy here is going to be your anode rod. As you see, it's already a little beat up from the uh, from when during testing. Uh, basically, what it does is it attracts the impurities in the water, so it attacks the rod and not the tank because the tank is a steel tank. So you do you always want to make sure you periodically check this uh, as it dwindles down. It'll start from here and work its way around. Usually, when it gets about here, it can potentially fall off. So you want to try to replace it. As you see, it starts out the size of a dime, and it will work itself down to the size of a coat hanger. This does have gas and electric options. The gas is going to be controlled from inside. Your electric option is going to be located at this switch down below. You do want to make sure there's water inside this before you hit that switch. If not, you can burn up the element. Uh, once again, um, you always do want to take this rod out. I did forget to tell you that is a 1 and 1 16th socket uh, to put that in and take it out. Uh, you're always trying to get all the water out of the camper so it doesn't get stagnant or bad. You want to take that guy out too to get the water out. You got your uh, vent up there for the uh, exhaust fan for the stove. And then basically on this side here, you just got a little table here that will mount to that shelf where the barbecue grill would go as well. And this guy basically, you're going to go upward with it, set it on there, and then sits and folds down just like so. Uh, you're not trying to hang a bunch, you know, you're not trying to put a lot of weight on this. Uh, too much weight can cause damage to the rail, things along that nature. Uh, it's great for holding your beers while you're barbecuing. Maybe a package of hot dogs, things along that nature. You're just not trying to set like 50 pounds of meat on there. All right, so next we're going to talk about our steps here. With our steps, you do have to make sure that the door is fully open when you go to operate the steps okay uh, when these guys are folding up the door is partially open you can cause damage to the screen with this guy this guy here basically they sit on the back side when the door is shut it keeps the steps secured so it doesn't rock around these guys here so you can adjust your feet Another thing to also note is when you go to bring this guy down, you do want to make sure this is fairly flush with the threshold as possible. As you see, we got a minor gap on that side, a little one on this side. Too high of an elevation can cause damage to both the steps and the entry door if you're not careful. So we are going to go ahead and adjust our, our step here a little bit. Right here at the entry door is going to be your fire extinguisher. Right over here is going to be our GFCI outlet. It's uh, and then our control panel for our inverter. Uh, basically what the inverter does is it will convert the 12 volt to a 110. So you could use uh, some of the outlets in the coach, be able to run a couple things along that nature. Uh, this light switch right here. Basically a little ambiance light for the closet area on each side of the um, Murphy style bed set, set up here. You do also have a 12 volt hook up there for charging your phone. Same thing on the other side as well. So for the Murphy style bed, first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to lift this and drop down. And this guy here pulls out. This, will, this here lays down. And then our bed. They do provide storage on each side of the bed as well. Uh, there is a uh, blind there that pulls down so you can block that front area. Each side does have its own individual reader lights as well. And this can 
to be in the up or down position during travel. It does not matter because your slide room is further back. Next, we're going to have our fire exit window. If you cannot make your way to the entry door, basically with this guy here, flings open. This is on a hinge, so the whole window would fling open. They, do rec they would say that you need to pull the screen out to be able to get out. I look at it, if there's a fire, get your feet through that. Get your feet out. Feet first. Just get out. Okay? Throwing a hand, you can easily get out. So behind this guy here is where you would go to basically winterize your coach. Your water pumps there is going to be a valve for that to bypass it. Uh, for our water here is going to be located back underneath our sink area. There's going to be, uh, I believe that's two valve system on that. And you return both of those valves. This is in the winterized position at this time. Uh, so you would have to um, change those valves over for water to get into the water heater. Uh, you do have storage underneath each bench seat area. The bench area here, table does break down into a bed as well. You would lift the, seat, the tabletop up, pull these legs out. They lay on the floor, and the table will basically sit on these guys right here. And then you use your back cushions to fill in that space. Next, we're going to have our thermostat here. There is a whole lot of button pushing with these guys with this style. First, turn it on. It's going to light up the panel. After that, you have fan low and fan high. From that, you got cool high and cool low. In these two settings here, the air conditioner will continually run. It doesn't matter what you have the temperature set to. Right now, it's set at 33 degrees, so it's naturally going to come on. We do like to test them to make sure that they do properly operate. Turn that guy up to 70. Next, you would have cool low auto and cool high auto. In these two settings, that's where it would kick on and off according to the temperature that we have set. So I just set it at 69 degrees. It's only 52 in here. Of course, it's going to shut off on us. And then our last option for us is going to be the heat, which that guy is set at 64. So it's probably it's going to probably try to kick on, but our propane isn't on, so it's not going to. All right. <clears throat> Next is going to be our vacuum area here. Uh, you got your on and off switch here. But you also, if you sweep it into a pile, you're able to come right here, lift it up, it'll stuff everything in there. It's got a dual bag in here, or a double hold size bag, um, unless they've changed the models on me, which they have the tendency to do that. Inside here, we're going to have our Bluetooth speaker in our safe. That is going to be controlled with your, well, oh, I've got those keys in front of the door. That's going to be controlled with that silver, um, power key that's going to be for the deadbolt on or for the lock on that guy and then more storage down below here as well next here in the bathroom area we do have an outlet that is provided our medicine cabinet uh as you see we got a sticker here that says there's an oc or shower miser that's going to be this guy located right down here there's a knob here on this side uh, basically, when it's pointed downward, it, what this is going to do is send the water through this pipe back into the fresh water tank. Uh, it helps can try to conserve the water when you're boondock camping. Uh, basically, this will change colors once the water starts getting hot. It gets to a lighter shade of blue. And then you can just turn this knob to the shower head setting and then take your shower. Basically, here's going to be your solar controller. Pretty much it just monitors the battery. knows when to start sending the surge from the solar panels. To the battery to charge next you got your control panel here basically it tells you your battery status and tank statuses for the fresh black and gray uh, your water heater that's going to be the gas option of the water heater once again the electric is controlled from outside and then the water pump you're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank if you're hooked to city water you do not need to use the water pump <clears throat> next these guys here are going to be for the holding tanks Basically, with these guys, if you're using these in the colder weather, you turn this on. Once the temperatures get to a certain level, they'll kick on. Once they feel that the uh, temperatures of the tanks are at a certain level, they will kick off automatically. They have built-in thermostats. And then this guy here is going to be our light for the bathroom. And then you do have your exhaust fan up above. You've got your on. 
and it's got four different fan speeds and then off what's your toilet here uh, so you you would add water so you can do your business you would lightly press on the pedestal it'll add water all the way down it's going to flush do you like to say you want to try to keep liquid in the bowl of the toilet so that seal doesn't get dry rotted or brittle because then the smells can start to come through and we wouldn't want that Next, uh, once again, this guy here would fold down. There's a lock there on the other side. This can fold down for the lower bunk. It does provide a USB hookup uh, so they can charge their phones. Uh, a light, same with the up top. Also, it has the USB. You got your mounts here for the ladder so they'd be able to get up on the top bunk as well. And then we have our 12 volt style fridge. Uh, this is one thing that can drain the battery. Um, when this guy's trying to get a full cool down, uh, the solar panels will struggle to try to keep the battery charged while this is going. Uh, one thing that you can kind of help with that is you can have these turned down. Um, this is going to be our power button. I'll show you that in just a minute. But basically, you got your temperature setting, so you can change the temperature. Right now, it's set for the freezer. If we want to set the temperature for the fridge, we can just change that. As you see, it's on three. Uh, once it's good and cold, three is pretty sustainable. Once you know, in the hotter, in the summertime. You might have to go up to a four uh, or even five, but a lot of times, uh, if you ain't careful, it will start freezing your food. Uh, and then you got this little moon, so it's like a, what it is, is it's a, um, at nighttime, it isn't pulling as much power to keep items cool, so it's like a cool, it's like a, so it's not pulling as much power. Uh, I do always like to recommend, though, that you do turn this off uh, when you're not using a coach, because once again, it can drain those batteries, unless you upgrade batteries. Um, Basically, though, you press and hold the power button for, I believe it's five to seven seconds, and it will shut it off. Down below that, we're going to have our control panel box. Anything that requires 110, or you got to be plugged into sure power, is going to be on your breakers. And then everything that runs on fuses, or runs off the batteries on fuses, and they do have everything right here labeled for what is what for you. What we're also down here is going to be where our LP and carbon monoxide detector is located. Uh, it's recommended you test these every 9 to 14 days. Uh, as you see, it's reading green right now. There's a button right here. We just push that button to perform the test. It's just that simple. And then it's going to do another different style beat. And then we'll go back to green. Uh, I do recommend you, you always do want to try to perform that test um, just to make sure that it is properly working. Uh, one of the main reasons is because somebody can turn this knobs here or they're leaning against these knobs and propane can be released um, Literally, they're just leaning up against it. They slide over belt loop anything along that nature can grab it and turn the knob So you have to be careful for that uh, Basically, this is gonna be information about your independent suspension uh, These are still fairly new to us. So we don't have a we don't know a whole lot of information about that. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know a whole lot of information about these yet. Um, but this gives a nice little description about them and things along that number. It also has the VIN for this equipment, so you don't want to lose this paper. And then you do have some storage up top. Up here is where our tire monitoring system is located. Uh, different options for your TV, things like that. This guy here is an appliance info sheet. Don't lose this because if something happens, this has the VINs uh, for most, you know, or the models and VINs for most of the appliances in here. So it's very all your helpful. All your serial numbers, all the stuff all you need. All the serial numbers. Very helpful. Then we have our stove. I'll come back to that sticker on the stove in just a second. Uh, basically, with this guy, you do want to make sure that's flipped up. But basically, you're just going to turn this to the light position. Turn that to the light position, and then this is your spark igniter on this side. Once it's lit, you can set your desired temperature. This does have two settings here, but it only operates just the top. This is designed for an oven model as well. Uh, down below is going to be your microwave slash convection oven, and I believe it also will roast and grill. Uh, there's a lot of nice little features to these guys. Uh, one thing I always like to recommend is setting the timer. You go out and do go out with your friends things like that you come back you see there, the time's not set it tells you there's a power failure potentially at the campsite you need to find out if it's from the campsite itself or from uh or from the electric company um power surges can cause damage to campers 
Uh, so having a surge protector wouldn't be hurt, wouldn't hurt to have. And the convection oven's a great feature. We had one in our camper. Uh, then you got this light switch here, which is just an ambiance light right there. Uh, it also has another 12 volt hookup here as well, 110 hookup. It is GFCI protected because it is near a water source. Uh, then we have our TV up there. Uh, nice thing about the TV, it is uh, ran off 12 volt system. And then right back here is what they call your TV antenna booster. You turn it on and to turn it off. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of see, there's a green light there. Uh, basically that's telling us that we're getting the antenna signal. Uh, if we were trying to do the cable or satellite, you would turn that booster off and then scan for cable channels to go through that process. And then you do have a couple of nice little bench seat areas here. Uh, basically from there though, we have made our way back to the door. Uh, if you guys do have any questions, do please feel free to call. We do our best to answer those phone for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.